Capricorn, welcome to your November and December 2017 prosperity reading. It's Raina here. So before I begin, I have been doing some, well, I created some quotes for the different signs based on their sun sign um, and the, the different attitudes that they may possess about prosperity. And I forgot to do Sagittarius, so I'm going to do yours. And it's actually a quote that I wrote down from a new book by Byron Katie, if you know who she is. You should definitely, you should definitely look her up if you're interested in self-actualization and just um, self-inquiry because she created a method called The Work. I just like her because she's got a Zen type of a mentality and I think that overall that is is very close to the truth at least what resonates for me and so the quote that I wrote down from her is what I'm giving to you for this period of time the ultimate job is not to change the world it's to change the world within you and it's from her book a mind at home with itself. And why did I pick that for Capricorn? Well, Ca Capricorn is a cardinal sign. And Capricorns uh, tend to be people who take charge of their life, or should I say their lives, and do, it, do so because they tend to be very ambitious and they're striving to better themselves, okay? But here's the little fly in the ointment. For almost 10 years now, we've had Pluto in Capricorn. I believe it went in January of 2008. Not sure. Okay, so for the last 10 years, you may have felt that you're hands have been tied in some way. You may have felt that you take three steps forward and two steps back. But remember, if that's the case, you still are gaining one step every time you take three steps forward. The point of this is that Pluto is a planet and an influence that is all about regeneration, is all about purification and healing. And it's happening on a global scale with all of the different structures of our society. Capricorn rules the structures, and we're seeing it, whether it's economic, educational, healthcare. It doesn't have to be just the United States where I'm from. It's all over the world. Governments themselves finding that people do not want to go along with the program. Let's look at um, Brexit and Catalonia. So the point is that you are experiencing this in a very personal way. How it has influenced you, I don't know. But when it comes to your finances, because you're an earth sign, this can make you double down, become more controlling, more obsessed with maintaining that standard, whatever you were dealing with before. And you can um, start to, instead of concerning yourself with your own world, it can veer out into con trying to control other people, trying to control situations that you have to leave alone. And that can impede your progress too. Now, these readings are looking at your career, your money, and your attitudes towards abundance. So that's where I wanted to go with this particular type of reading. In terms of um, some of the transits that are happening for you, you do have a big concentration of energy in the 11th house in November. At the time of the new moon in Scorpio, the new moon is, is accompanied by the sun and Jupiter and Venus. And these are all positive influences. And so the 11th house of hopes and wishes, the luckiest house in the zodiac, can really 
indicate that you are experiencing some kind of financial... I, well, it, you know, I could say it's financial because Venus and Jupiter can bring money, but I shouldn't specify it. It's something that maybe you've wanted for a long time could come to fruition or you could maybe you could get the money to accomplish whatever that is. And so that could be a significant time around the uh, approaching the third week in November. You're also earlier having a full moon in the fifth house in the sign of Taurus, a fellow earth sign. So the significance of that is that you may have a great idea that you can use for launching your own business. In November, this is something you could possibly take action on. December, not so much unless you just can't help yourself because of the Mercury retrograde that's taking place most of the month. And also because it's the holiday season, it may be something that uh, would be better launched at a different time when there are more people to pay attention to it. You know, a lot of people are busy at that time of year and you may find it falls through the cracks. Um, the other significant thing for you is that you have the um, entrance of Saturn into your sign. And this is happening uh, on the uh, winter solstice. I, well, I, sh I should just say the solstice because Australians do watch. And um, this could be, so this is around the 20th or so. I, I see different things. It should be, I think it's, is it the 21st? I don't know. I have to check. I thought it said the 20th. But anyway, the point is that you're, that's your ruler. So, and it's in the sign that it rules. So, there is a comfort level there. You know, Sagittarius and Saturn uh, mix like oil and water because Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter. And Jupiter is not a planet that is about discipline. It's actually about excess, if anything. And it's certainly not about um, being serious and being organized. It's about just kind of... Um, it's it's more to me an expanse of it's going outwards where actually Saturn seems more of a not a constrictive energy but just an energy that relates to trying to get more disciplined more organized so it is kind of like narrowing things down rather than widening them so I, I think that this will be very beneficial for Capricorns, that you will tend to experience a sense of being in your own element, and that can assist you in anything that you want to make manifest in the next two and a half years. Because you're looking at vision, but you're also looking at the action and the organization that it entails and that that they're all important you can't have one without the other when you're trying to actually make something happen so i'm going to be picking three cards two of them with an earth theme one being the native spirit deck which is connected to the native americans the earth religion that they possess and this one is medicine woman medicine man I don't think I've ever gotten that card, so that makes me happy. Um, and then this one is the Keepers of the Light Oracle deck, which has like these Ascended Masters or Archangels, whatever you want to call them. Horus, Cosmic Gateway. By the way, speaking of Cosmic Gateways, don't forget 1111. That's supposed to be a cosmic gateway. So maybe we'll hear about 1111. And then the Earth Magic deck. Another earthy type of thing, especially suitable for Capricorns. DNA Karma. Hmm. 
There was something I was going to say about that. I can't, I mean, I don't know. I don't remember. Okay, so let's talk about medicine woman and medicine man. Gather your resources. Be discerning. Vast inner power is growing in your life. Step back and let it grow. There are times to shine brightly for all to see, and there are also times to choose wise, to choose carefully who sees your true self. Choose wisely. Do not make hasty decisions. If it doesn't feel right, hold back. You're protected from any less than positive outside influences. Your capacity and potential are growing in leaps and bounds. It's traditional in indigenous cultures to carry a medicine bag or medicine bundle as a form of protection and also as a way to access your personal power through the sacred objects that are held there. The items in the medicine bag each contain potent qualities that allow one's abilities to magnify and also help one commune with the creator. As your power grows, take time to protect it. Just as you protect a seedling in the early months and then later, once it's, a, uh, once it's an established tree, it can withstand the storms of time. Protect your growing power and it will become as mighty as an ancient oak. Consider obtaining or creating your own medicine bag or bundle. Put objects in it that are meaningful to you and make you feel strong and vital whenever you look at them or hold them. Traditionally, one's medicine bag was not worn for display, but often hidden from view or kept in a sacred place. You know, I was thinking about um, having a crystal pouch. I just found my quartz crystal that I hadn't had for a long time. Um, and I was thinking of having this little, this little thing I put on my... These, this is a little crystal pouch. Ooh. <laughs> but um, I, ha I, don't, um, I haven't brought it with me. And, um, but I think I, I would go beyond that. That's kind of like the physical version of what I would say is I would also say, keep your ideas close to your vest. If you have ideas, don't just blab them, you know, others can, t can take them. And you may have some great ideas, especially around the time of the Taurus full moon, which actually as I record that, this is tonight where I live, so that'll be fun. And um, who knows, you may have um, some really great ideas that you want to implement in the future. And then this is Horus Cosmic Gateway. It says, your thoughts are magnetic and powerful. Miraculous changes are occurring. I can't tell if that's a... It looks like a pigeon with a with a headdress on. Okay. Let's see what this says. Horus is the Egyptian eagle. Okay, there you go. Eagle-headed god and sun. I didn't know um, Horus was supposed to be an eagle. Twin flame of the goddess Isis. He is known for his foresight, psychic awareness, and ability to travel between the wor worlds. He can help us move into the cosmos with our mind, meditations, and prayers so that we can harness the nat natural magic that surrounds us. He was known for ritual magic in the past, and now he helps create pockets of energy in the world where we can access light, wisdom, and insight. If you are seeing the symbol of an eye appearing around you, you know that Horus is asking you to become aware of how you're influencing the energy around you and how it is in turn influencing you. Why would we see an eye around? Well, forget, forget I asked. I'm sure maybe people have visions. You're connected to the universe and have the ability to manifest miraculous experiences. Your thoughts, words, and actions are like magnets drawing the energy that creates and cultivates your world. You have a stellar gateway chakra above your head a vortex of energy that is influenced by your own energy. You can place ideas into this vortex to create what you are seeking. The, uh, the universe also offers you guidance, abundance, and support and healing based on your capacity to connect to it and accept it. You have a real opportunity to further that connection now by sending prayers and intentions out into the cosmos. Yeah, definitely 
at the time of that at the time of that um, new moon in Scorpio, this will be that long range area of your life, the the house of hopes and wishes, the eleventh house. Plant the seeds of intention then because this is a very good time. Um, actually, it's funny. If you know anything about Jane, Jane Spiller, she was a, an astrologer who passed away, and she talked about this, and she called it um, your granddaddy power period. And you can look that up online, and they will explain it, and they even have like a, a calculator to let you know. But it's when, I believe it's when that there's energy in that 11th house so it's like when the sun goes there and maybe the new moon. When you have a new moon in that 11th house, that's your granddaddy power period. And you're having Jupiter there. So you're having a lot of stuff happening in that 11th house. And you could have a lot of... I, I don't want to call them miracles. I don't know if that would be appropriate. But definitely these dreams coming true in your life. The thing about what they said about speaking these things into being, that's one of the things that Capricorns have to watch out for, is pessimism, that Saturn, the dark side of Saturn, which is being very uh, cynical about life, thinking that, thinking the worst, thinking um, in terms of the worst, sides, the worst side of people, the the what could possibly go wrong and you want to curb that Saturn in the in the good side of things is really bringing clarity to your life and bringing a sense of a loss of that excess so that you can just it's looks like if you go into a room and it's cluttered you feel like totally discombobulated and if it's if the if everything is um, pared down, there's a sense of freedom in that. There really is, and you feel like um, this expansiveness. So this is one of the reasons why the people have kind of embraced minimalism because they feel like it adds something to their lives. And I think that a lot of Capricorns are resonate with. They do resonate with that because of that Saturnian influence, okay? So then the last card here is, and there's also, by the way, there's a saying that if you make space for something, which means if you uh, let go of things, that, the, the, that nature abhors a vacuum and something else will come in. DNA karma. Now this is like the, I think this is the ancestral DNA theory or belief. Okay, let me see. I'm trying to get this in before that truck gets here. I can hear it in the background. Karma, a concept in many Eastern religions, is a Sanskrit word implying the greater universal laws of cause and effect, providing an implied code of ethics within the structure of of the seemingly endless cycles of birth, death, and rebirth, called samsara, which we experience throughout our lives in many different versions. The mistaken notion about karma is it's some kind of punishment, but it's far from that. In fact, it, in its purest form, it simply asserts that our conduct in this lifetime will determine our next incarnation. It has also come to mean how our behavior and actions in this lifetime create consequences in a slightly different version of the golden rule. We not only carry our soul's karma into this lifetime, but also embedded in the complex coding of our DNA is our genetic ancestral karma. The double helix structure of DNA contains codes that have been passed down from our parents and grandparents as well as our ancestors. Therefore, we have some of the same genetic information that come from the DNA of very early humans. Aspects of your soul entered your primitive physical self long before you had begun to take form. While the DNA that you inherited from your biological parents has a physical component, it also has a soul pattern that came together in the creation of you. You are predisposed to follow the karmic dictates of this pattern to some extent, 
Yet as you evolve into your consciousness and expand the light of awareness, you can make choices that shift and modify this ancestral design. This is one of those times. You can feel the tug of your soul that is both ancient and karmic, yet you also recognize the persistent and loving communication from your higher self that contradicts the more familiar solutions before you. The choice is up to you, but know that every time you heed the guidance of your higher self, no matter what etheric or physical form it takes, human consciousness is elevated. In a sense, it becomes a choice between destiny and fate. And um, to, to kind of, you know, connect it to the area of abundance, one of the things that, and I don't think that they were really directly alluding to this, but it's the ideas that are passed down to you. Forget about DNA or anything like that, or even, yeah, forget about that. Let's just talk about what kind of attitudes were you brought up believing about money. And if they were on the negative side, then it can tend to lead to you having similar ideas. And it becomes very hard to break out of that if you have a an actual reality, a past reality that kind of reflects it. So for instance, if you came from a low income background and you come from people who always say, I don't have enough and they are really, you know, they're very negative about issues surrounding money. It's very hard to, to kind of like counteract that because you, you've experienced lack. So lack consciousness seems like it's just being in touch with reality when really these are experiences in our lives. Um, there are many people that start out in their life and they have very little and they end up being very prosperous. As a matter of fact, I think that the sometimes the people that come from a very low income levels, sometimes they rise the highest because the desire is so great to, to rid themselves of that position. If you grow up in a middle class or even like a lower middle class environment, you basically have all your needs met and there's really not this intense struggle. You know, your needs are basically met. So it's, it's, it's more when you can definitely see how money is keeping you from experiencing life that you want it very badly. And that tends to be with the people that are at the very low end of things. But if you're just kind of uh, going along and you live a middle class life, and I heard that that's what the middle class was created to do in a way, if you want to get into conspiracy theories, is that when people are, their stomachs are full and they're, they have like some creature comforts, maybe they can go on vacation every year, they tend to kind of go along with the program easier, um, more readily than people who feel that they've been deprived of something. So they're easier to manage, okay? And um, so we're, we're seeing in our society, we're seeing these shifts and we're seeing an attack on the middle class. And now they're starting to get activated because they were lulled into this false sense of security. And that that's a way to control people, to keep them very um, distracted and comfortable, comfortably numb <laughs> or, or just distracted. And um, so that was one thing that came up for me. The other thing is... I like the idea of breaking out of that. It's like breaking out of the matrix altogether by understanding that your higher self is your personal journey. Even if you came here and you share DNA with other family members and you share experiences with them, it doesn't mean that you are doomed to become like them. And, and it's very important, and, and this also applies to anyone of your group, whether you come from a certain area where people tend to do this or that, or 
It could be a race, eth ethnicity. Um, I love that mention of the higher self because ultimately we are individual souls. Yes, we are a collective as well. It's both. I understand that. But I do believe that we came here to express ourselves as individuals. And so whatever our destiny is, it's something that we desire for ourselves. And when we try to fit into somebody else's expectations, that's where I feel that we get off track and then we stop being in alignment. So um, recognize DNA and karma, but don't be consumed by it, is basically what I would say. And challenge all of those perceptions. Going back to Byron Katie, whose quote I mentioned, one of the things of the work is, one of the things, the first things you say about any statement that you make in your mind is, is it true? Okay, and um, so when you question your thoughts, you start to gain clarity because we tend to just believe whatever we think and that's a big mistake. So anyway, Capricorn, I hope that you enjoyed this. I know these are kind of a little bit maybe different than, than typical prosperity readings, but I hope you enjoyed it anyway. If you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. Otherwise, have an awesome rest of 2017. Bye.